Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. It's episode 109, uh, and I was I was originally going to show you a little video, but um, it's not working. You see, if you remember <clears throat> at the end of the last episode, I mentioned I was going to do a little bit of work on upgrading everybody's weapons and armor, so that way I'd make sure that, you know, the double-bladed lightsaber was the best that I could have equipped if I had any uh, updated inlays and overlays that I could put in the armor that those happen. That out of the out of the different um, skill systems and, you know, systems and packages and whatever that I had on hand, everybody had the best one. Although, uh, if I had had a slightly more accessible lab bench, I probably would have gone gone back to uh, rework everybody's. But my, my issue is, and th this is one of the few issues that I have with Knights of the Old Republic 2, um, so I can't use the quickness D package because my constitution is not high enough. It needs to be a minimum of 18. But when I go look at the character sheet, I see constitution 27. Huh. I I should be able to use it, right? Well, the problem is my base constitution before modifications is not high enough. So the light side mastery that has plus three con doesn't apply when trying to put in the, the implant. Uh, the constitution bump from the armor inlay doesn't help. The constitution bump from the armband and from the headband and... Um, and I get a couple other, obviously I got a couple others. I mean, my constitution's up to 27. 27. Um, <laughs> I, am, I am a hardy fellow. Uh, so, and, and nowhere in this interface does it give you a way to see uh, their, their base, their base stat. So I, I have no way of knowing what the base constitution is other than to go in here, unequip everything. And then take a look. Oh wait, no, because then I'll still have the plus three for light side mastery. Um, so th that's one of my issues. I, I kind of wish it would, you know, either on on the equipment side, you know, at least tell you what your constitution was, so you would know. Um, I know it's got to be at least 16, but less than 18, so that leaves it as 16 or 17. I guess I'll find out when I go to level up again, uh, if I get a, an ability bump. But anyway, so there that is. Um, in order to do all that crafting, I needed to get off Korriban, because if you remember, the whole time we were there, there were no workbenches to be found anywhere. No wonder why all the Sith died. They had nowhere to upgrade their equipment. Um, so I needed to get off the planet. I could have worked on the bench on the ship, but uh, if you remember, I got somebody else to do all my skilly stuff. You know, like, like my computer use is 26, so that's good. But anything that requires demolitions, I'm not going to craft that. I, I got a skill rank in demolitions and a bonus of plus two because intelligence and... ooh. Yes, with my three demolitions, I should totally be building stuff that explode. No, no. <laughs> Hello, Beach Duck. Um, so normally I'd have Baudur or one of the other minions who has an appropriately high skill do that, but you can't switch between minions on the ship. So I ended up flying over to, to um, Narshada using one of the benches there. Uh, and, and and going through that, in, in that clip, there was a flight where two of the other handmaidens over at Visa's place were talking about the handmaiden who is our companion. And um, I'm, I'm going to try real quick to see if maybe, maybe that will play this time. We'll see.
Has there been any word of her? None yet. I do not understand why she displays such disobedience. You know why. She bears the face of her mother. Why Atris would have sent her on such a mission is something I do not understand. In terms of combat, she is the last among us. In terms of stealth, she is willful and not prone to disguise herself. Her stance, it has too much passion about it. Perhaps that is why Atris sent her. Perhaps it is an exile of her own. No. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'll, I'll figure that out. I, uh, it may end up just having to get spliced into the <laughs> spliced into the uh, the, the episode. Uh, so if you're watching this later on YouTube, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about in that you'll have already seen the video and you'll wonder what I'm talking about in that you weren't there for the live stream when it wouldn't play for me. <sighs> okay. Enough of all that. We were supposed to be over here because if you remember... Uh, where's my quest log? Uh, T3 told us that Kelborn was trying to reach us. Uh, something about he's got an urgent message from Master Kavar for us and that we needed to return to Dixon as quick as possible. Uh, then we went and did our crew check-in and spent time leveling up. But hey, we're here now. Yeah, that's, that's what matters, right? So let's pick up from there. It's up to you, Jedi. This soldier knows the terrain. He can get us where we need to go quickly, without needing to blast our way through herds of Canucks. I swear I keep wanting to read that as Canucks. I know that's not right. I know that's not even how you spell it. But I keep wanting to read that as Canucks. All right. So the nice thing is, is that once you find the Mandalorian camp, they leave this Yahoo here, so that way you can fast travel to the camp. Um... You can hoof it all the way up there. Nothing's going to attack you if you killed everything all in your way for the first time. Um, but in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and say, let's go to your camp. Follow me, then. You received my message there. <laughs> a man named Kavar wanted to get a hold of you urgently. He said that the Queen had arranged safe passage to Onderon for you. Oh. But I don't know how good their offer is anymore. Uh, hmm. did Kavar say what he wanted, or what's changed? What's changed? This morning, General Vaklu met with the Council of Lords and declared that the Queen was guilty of treason. Oh. It will be made regent if Talia and her royal guard are defeated. The military is divided on who to support. Civil war has fallen on Isis. Uh, so how can we help Queen Talia? I doubt that Queen Talia and her advisor will survive until nightfall. The balance of forces seem to favor Queen Talia. The royal palace is heavily fortified and defensible. Well, I mean, the soldiers are loyal to her, but Vaklu has no how power. heavily fortified? And soldiers and their masters. The war oh, is also well, that does change things a little bit. The streets mad. Braylor and I both concur. She doesn't stand a chance. You underestimate the force, Mandalorian. I sense that we may still get to Master. Now you got to say it with tonight. more of a cackle. I sense there is something stirring on the moon itself. Tell me, have your senses picked up anything from Duxon? Yes. Yes, yes medic. Have. I did just start. No. Uh, I've only been up for about ten-ish minutes. Zuka satellite relay has also picked up several shuttles. Not to notify your notification, but IDs. yeah, I, I don't always get the notifications like I should either. The Sith forces must be stopped. Well, Otherwise, yes, the Sith forces must be stopped. And Queen Talia won't survive this day. That, that's... Dividing our forces at a time like this is foolhardy. And this yeah. is why a common soldier will never triumph against a uh, Jedi. Look, your lady, that common soldier's got it right. He'd never split the, the party. I know how that goes. That we face both enemies at the same time. All right. <sighs> I can't be in two places at once. Uh, look, anytime they give you a skill option, it's usually a good idea to take it. So because my awareness is high enough, I get the option to go. I have to lead the group heading into the Royal Palace, don't I? You, you are correct. Hmm. You must choose who will lead the expedition right. through the jungle to find our enemies and defeat them. Okay, so here's the deal. I now have to pick a group of three people who are going to go through the jungle to assault the Sith camp. And I'm going to take control of them. And then 
I'm going to take a separate group that consists of myself, Kriya, the lady I'm talking to, and one other. Like, I can't change that I'm in the group. I can't change that Kriya's in the group. I only get my third person. And frankly, um, since I want a bruiser as my third person, I'm going to pick the Mandalore. Uh, because when you absolutely need somebody to blow the ever-loving snot out of whoever is standing in front of you, I choose the Mandalore. <laughs> I, uh, also, I'd love to take HK because he would be both funny and useful, but then my heal wouldn't be able to heal his hit points, and, and I, I'd value that too. So... I've got five people out of my crew who I could put in charge of this party into the jungle, this expedition. Um, <clears throat> I know that I want Beodor, the Handmaiden, and Mira in that group. I, I'm curious. I'm curious if it matters who who you say is in charge and if that matters at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the group in charge of my right hand maiden <laughs> and uh and then i will do what you ask of me you should <laughs> send two others to go with the leader well, yes i should Who send two others because she's not a leader if you don't send a team to lead right all right so i'm gonna send the handmaiden as my bruiser so she is the muscle i'm gonna send beodur for two reasons he's got all the skills they're likely to need. Uh, picking locks, hacking computers, engineering stuff to explode. Uh, he's got all those skills. So I'm going to send him. Yes, good choice. And who else? And I know I'm going to need somebody with stealth. I also noticed that you can't uh, choose one of the droids to be in charge of that group. That, that, that seems somethingist. I'm not sure what. Um... But I am going to send Mira as the third person because I know that there's a spot where I'm going to need somebody with stealth. And I also want somebody who's got good range. And that, le that means that it's either Mira or Goto. Uh, as much as I like Goto, he suffers the same problem that HK suffers in that anybody's heal won't heal him. All the Jedi support buffs don't affect droids. Uh, which makes them less ide less than ideal for carrying carrying in your party later in the game. Uh, I, I gotta say, I, I kind of wish there was a way to make some of the some of the support stuff affect them. Like, I don't know, make it a special module or something, or something that you have to craft. Uh, that that could be cool too. But I'm gonna go ahead and send Mira on this one because she has stealth and ranged support. Hmm. Okay. Now, what was that? Mm, okay. Choices? Are you certain? No, I changed my mind. <laughs> yes, I'm certain. I'm not going to back talk because uh, I, I still think she's a little more powerful than I am. Or at least more powerful than she's let on. All right, so yes, I am certain. Mandalorian warriors will go with you to find the enemy camp. Just let me know when you want to head out. If you mm. need supplies, talk with Kex. After you get into the jungle, you might not have another yeah. opportunity to stock up. Let me know if you want to go now. All right. Let me go talk to the quartermaster. And then I'll send my party out. Hello, Mr. Quartermaster. The quartermaster, quartermaster stone. It's you again. Oh. Okay. You still holding a grudge? You're still breathing. Okay. I I, I, I got to admit, I should have expected that one. <laughs> you, you ask a Mandalorian, you still hold the grudge? I, I don't know why I expected a reply other than, are you still breathing? <clears throat> I mean, this is the way. All right. Let's see what you got. Uh, I've got 19 advanced med packs. That should be enough. I got two med packs, but seriously, they're, they're, they're the... I, I don't want those. Um, 
I think I've already gone through all the armors and stuff because nobody, nobody that's wearing light armor's got. Everybody's got something better than a defense bonus of five. Everybody in medium's got something better than a seven. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm not seeing anything. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, because I am not a Cheaty McCheaterson, I did not do the glitch with the handmaiden that lets you get an infinite number of handmaiden robes to sell for money or break down for components. And that meant that I had to break down a lot of gear to build upgrades for everybody. Like, I got... You look at my sell list, and, and I, I don't I don't have a whole lot there anymore. I used to have a lot. I don't have a lot, because I broke it all down for parts. I needed parts. Bad. Um, oh, well. So we've got, uh, I thought, I thought this guy had a component or something that I was supposed to really look for. Um, ooh, a fully, un a fully upgradable Achani Vibro Sword. Oh, never mind. That's why I didn't buy that. I really could use that for somebody because there's a couple of people that have melee options that are less than optimal because, well, I ran out of parts. Um, but that is 13k and I have... Five. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I could use I could use a couple more Mandalorian Rippers too, but uh, again, we run into the money problem. Thermal detonators. I can make those. I can make those cheaper than I can buy them. Um, yeah, I thought there was something that I needed, like needed, needed. And I'm not... Hmm. Yeah, no, I could have used a couple of those, but I can make them for a lot less than it takes to buy them. Alright. No, I thought he had something. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone back. Ooh, I did get a life support pack. Oh, yeah, because Kelborn said to give it to him. Alright. Oof. Uh, I could run around and do a quick check-in with everybody, but honestly, I don't think anybody anybody needs me to run around. So let's uh, let's inform Kelborn. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's inform uh, Kelborn. The enemy base. It will be a long journey through the jungle. Yes, the party is ready to leave. Party one. As you wish. Mandalore has arranged for <laughs> special transportation to get to Isis. Oh yeah. Our numbers. <laughs> We'll get to that special transportation in a minute. Finally, we're close to our objective. I sent the rest of my men to secure the trail behind us. My troops will keep the path to the Mandalorian camp clear. Ahead lies the enemy. I can follow you a little bit further, but then I will set up command and control for my unit in the field. So lead on. All right. So uh, that's about all the help we're going to get out of him. No, oh. we can't turn our backs on the mission. Yeah, no, I wasn't trying to. I just wanted to see if there was uh, a little more map that way, but apparently not. All right. Hello, Beastie. Oh, that's right. I got to remember, she's got some different stuff here. She does have power attack, attack. Um, I thought she had that, that leap attack. Force wave, throw away. Throw lightsaber. Energy resistance, force barrier, heal. Huh. Okay. I thought she did, but let's uh just jump in and start swinging. This shouldn't this shouldn't take long. If it does, something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. She is going through uh He's going through force points a little quicker than I would have liked. So let's. All right. Uh, that gives some attack and defense bonuses. But oh, come on, game. No, no. There we go. Let's try to enable force channel and uh, probably also want to set her up as Jedi support. So when I switch control to somebody else, I can't skin them for something. Okay. That would have been nice. There, 
There we go. Oh, only two mines. I really should send. Actually, yeah. Yeah? That's what I got you here for. Recover those mines. I need them for parts. Type 2 Perimeter Motion Relay. That particular model has several security vulnerabilities and design flaws. <laughs> Stealth field generators can fool them. If one of us could get close to it, I know the corporate override code for it. Amateurs shouldn't even bother building security technology. That is more oh, true than you, you know, are good sir. ignorant in the ways of battle. Good. But all of you must pass through its perimeter, and undetected would be better. <laughs> all right. Um, we shouldn't even bother. They're going to know we're here soon enough. Same person that can use stealth can probably also disable it. We'll send one of us up ahead. They'll use the code to bypass the sensor. Avoid the mines. If any of the ones close to the sensor are detonated, then we shouldn't even bother. And I'm going to go ahead and recover this one real quick. And then... I'm going to switch to Mira. This is what she was brought here for. I'm going to put in solo mode. And then set her to stealth. Because Mira has the very special feat that allows her to walk past mines without setting them off. It's very useful. So she can go through here. And, uh... Head on over to the perimeter sensor. <laughs> it hums quietly. Not for long. Uh, demolitions. Repair. Use the override code. The sensor powers down. Nice! And then... Did... Did that Yahoo follow me? Alright, no. I guess he didn't. They're all there. Alright, so now that the perimeter sensor is down, we can rejoin the party. Slowly. Eventually. Turn off stealth. Turn off solo mode. And then we put Mr. Demolitions back in the lead. So he can start recovering more mines. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you for that, medic. That. That is amazing. That That is absolutely amazing. Amazing. Thank you for the gift subs. <laughs> oh, wow. My uh, list of who's on hasn't refreshed. Are Beast Lord and One Winged Angel on right now? To see that they got a gift sub? Because I know, I know gift subs work a little weird where you can actually receive a random sub or, or a random gift and not actually be on at the time you receive it. I'm here. Oh, I haven't saved him. Oh. I, I am a little more paranoid about saving after... Uh, oh, <laughs> I mentioned that on Coffee Craft. I didn't mention that here. Um, <clears throat> while I was... Okay, they will see it when they log in. Good. Uh while I was doing everybody's upgrades last Saturday. I did a bunch of upgrades and crafting and upgrading and crafting and, and saved it about noon and then kept going with the upgrading and crafting and about three hours later. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That that was that was on the plan. You, you missed that in the uh, the opening. Uh, that, that is, I got to figure out how I want to theme them. Um, I might talk about that a little bit more at the first break coming up. Um, I spent three hours making sure that everybody, out of all the armor that I had, everybody had the best armor that they could wear, and that the armor had the best inlays and overlays for what they're doing. And same for the weapons, 
and I just had one more guy to go, and the game crashed. And I lost three hours of upgrading. And carefully deciding who should get what. What kind of upgrades they needed, and all that sort of stuff. So, I've gotten a lot more paranoid about saving the game. And uh, before... Before I jump into the field, we're going to take our first break on the live stream. So, uh, you YouTube folks, it's going to be the first break until the next episode. <laughs> For the live stream folks, stick with me because we got a lot more to go. Well, that was fun. Unless I just died. Then it was a little less than fun. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you're having fun. And... If you want to watch live, you can follow along on Twitch. I live stream the recording of the next six episodes at least once a week. I might even throw in some bonus content here and there if time allows. And you'll find the link in the description below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you'll get notified when new episodes go up, live stream archives from some of my other stuff, and various and sundry other videos. Because I do more than just this. And if you want to get notifications, don't forget to hit the bell. And if you really, truly enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and all that good fun stuff. If you have any questions, queries, quips, quotes, comments, complaints, or other whatnot, don't forget to leave those in the comments down below. Lastly, if you're enjoying the show, if you're getting some value out of it, then consider giving a lot of value back. Go to live.anonjunior.com. It'll take you to the Streamlabs page where you can tip or donate, however you want to think about it. And there's no preset amount because this is a straight up value for value proposition. So if you're getting value out of the show and you would like to give a little value back, even if it's just enough for a cheap cup of coffee, then uh, consider going, giving a little bit, especially if it tickled the nostalgia or opened your eyes to a new game that you might play. And uh, with all that said and done, we're, uh, we're going to cut out, have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you next time.